Hi guys, what's up? It's Lindsay and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have another week of what I ate for you guys featuring a lot of fun recipes as well as some baked goods. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you aren't already subscribed, here is a reminder to do so. My first meal breakfast was a smoothie bowl. I've been making these a lot lately and this is the recipe that I tend to use. It's just one frozen banana, some frozen mango, half of one of these acai packets from Trader Joe's. This time I threw in some frozen strawberries but they're kind of optional, they don't really add a lot and then some oat milk to help it blend up nice and creamy. And this actually ends up making quite a lot. It makes really enough for two smoothie bowls. So I poured one for myself and then put my excess in the freezer. And the one I was going to eat, I topped with some pumpkin seed granola and some coconut chips as well. It's just so cold and refreshing. It's really good for hot days. For lunch, I made a salad with some baby kale, shredded carrots, cilantro, and Trader Joe's teriyaki baked tofu. I also chopped up some cashews, and then I made a spicy cashew dressing, kind of inspired by sweet green, and I'll leave the recipe details for this dressing below, but it has cashew butter, sesame oil, rice wine vinegar, avocado oil, honey, and some chili garlic sauce. This was super good, very filling because of the cashew butter and the tofu, and if you like Thai flavors, you'll definitely like this salad. Later, as a snack, I had some gluten-free Trader Joe's cinnamon raisin bread, just with some butter. This is the best toast, and it is so small that it is like the perfect snack. The actual pieces are very small. For dinner, I just had some leftover pasta with roasted veggies and marinara, topped it with some vegan parmesan. Such a basic meal, but it really always is good. For dessert, I had some so delicious chocolate Oreo ice cream because we were watching The Bachelor and I needed a snack. This is my favorite vegan ice cream if you ever are curious or wanted to try one. It is truly unmatched. Wednesday for breakfast, I had just made a loaf of fermented sourdough bread. So I had a slice of that toasted with avocado, everything but the bagel seasoning and red pepper flakes. A classic combo, but when you have your own homemade sourdough, it just takes it up a notch. It is so good. I also had some of this Tuscan cantaloupe that I sliced up. They are a lot sweeter than your average cantaloupe, so if you can get your hands on one, they're currently at Trader Joe's, you definitely should. Then I was in the mood to bake, and I really love orange cranberry scones, but I hadn't made them gluten-free before. So I looked up a recipe and followed it, just made some substitutions to make it vegan, like using coconut milk instead of full-fat heavy cream, and I used a flax egg instead of egg, and these ended up turning out absolutely perfect. Orange cranberry is one of my favorite combinations, and if you're making these scones, be sure to brush them with some milk and sprinkle some sugar on top because it caramelizes and that just, you know, the topping has to be the best part of these little scones. And I obviously had to have one as a snack after they were hot out of the oven. And then for lunch, I made another salad using some baby kale and also some arugula. I pretty much accidentally bought baby kale, but now I think I'm obsessed with it. It's just like a softer version of real kale or adult kale, I suppose. And then I topped it with my usual favorite salad toppings of Kalamata olives, cherry tomatoes, and I recently bought the Violife Vegan Feta that you've all been telling me to try for ages, and it did live up to the hype. It is very good. So I added some of that along with some sunflower kernels and some croutons with my sourdough bread, and then topped it with the Trader Joe's Vegan Caesar Salad Dressing, which I truly believe was made for me because I used to make Vegan Caesar Salad Dressing all the time, and now I don't have to. I just buy it. It's so good. It saves me time. I also had a Citrus Sunrise Better Kombucha, which is one of my favorite kombucha brands. For dinner, I made a huge batch of vegan pad thai because it's one of my favorite foods that I learned to make during the pandemic because my boyfriend and I used to eat it out a lot. And it's not that hard. You really just need vegan fish sauce and tamarind paste. And then the rest is just a bunch of delicious veggies. So I'll leave the recipe in the description, but I also like to add some oven baked tofu just to kind of make it a little bit heartier. And you guys have seen me do that a million times. I just toss the tofu in cornstarch, put it in the oven, 
at like 375, 400 for about 30 minutes. The sauce is really what makes this recipe. It has vegan fish sauce, brown sugar, lime juice, tamarind paste, and chili garlic sauce. And I typically use fresh rice noodles that are in the refrigerated section of the grocery store and top it with peanuts and cilantro and lime juice. It is so good and definitely worth all of the prep. Thursday for breakfast, I had some cantaloupe to begin my morning because I truly just had so much cantaloupe. <laughs> it's a good fruit to buy if you wanna eat more fruit because you just end up with so much of it. And I also had some avocado toast prepared the same way as before. For lunch, I had my pad thai leftovers because you guys know I love leftovers and this stuff reheats really well and I just usually top it with some more peanuts and some fresh cilantro just to kind of brighten it up a bit. As a snack, I add half a bag of these white cheddar hip peas and a peach better beach kombucha because I was going on a picnic date and I needed something portable. And then when I got back, I made a Trader Joe's cauliflower crust pizza and I really love these surprisingly. Um, it's just so much better than it looks, I must say. But you cook the cauliflower crust first in the oven and flip it over a few times. So because of that, I like to cook my veggies beforehand since it only goes in the oven finished for like five minutes. So I just sauteed some mushrooms, zucchini, and squash. And then once the pizza was ready to be topped, I used the Trader Joe's kale cashew pesto and their new cashew mozzarella shreds, which are so good. And I'm so happy to let you guys know that because Trader Joe's has not had a good rep with vegan cheese, but they have changed their reputation with this cheese. You guys have to try it. And then here you can see I'm just topping it with the rest of my veggies. And I also topped it with some jarred sun-dried tomatoes as well so easy probably gonna make it tonight again to be honest so you gotta try it Friday morning this was actually the first day of the week I had a chai latte this is my usual combination of reishi chai concentrate and oat milk and of course I had that with one of my cranberry scones because they are just made to be eaten for breakfast I was very busy this day, so I was thankful to have my leftover pizza, and I just topped it with some red pepper flakes. And then for dinner, again, a quick meal. I just made some jasmine rice to go with a frozen curry from the farmer's market. These are available locally in LA all over. At a ton of farmer's markets, they have like 50 different vegan soups, and I just love having them on hand for times like these, and you know, it's super delicious too. After dinner, I actually made some cookie dough to bake the next day, but I thought I would just show you the day I actually made it. The recipe is from Minimalist Baker, and they are gluten-free and vegan, and they have a base of almond flour, so they're very fluffy. And what's also interesting is that they use aquafaba or the liquid from a can of chickpeas, if you are not familiar. And if you whip it up really nice, it has the texture of like a egg white, which is something I don't do frequently, but I was determined to make some good cookies. Saturday, the last day of this video, I made a breakfast burrito, which has been my go-to on the weekends, and I featured it in vlogs, but I had to show you guys if you haven't seen it already. These are the gluten-free tortillas that I use, and I'll leave the spices in the description for the tofu scramble, but when I do a tofu scramble, I like to start out with whatever veggies I want in it. So today I had leftover mushrooms from my pizza that didn't fit on the pizza, along with some red bell pepper. Then you just wanna crumble your firm tofu into your pan, add your seasonings, and really squash any liquid out. Because it's firm tofu, there isn't too much liquid, but you just wanna cook it thoroughly and get it thoroughly seasoned. Then when it comes to assembly, I like to melt some cheese on my tortilla, throw a crispy hash brown on top, pile it with tofu scramble along with some cilantro, covered in hot sauce, and there you have it. I must say, if you buy these tortillas, don't overcook them because they do get kind of crunchy. As you can see, I had trouble rolling it. I also had a chai latte on this day, prepared the same way as usual, but doesn't that just look so beautiful? Then I baked all of the chocolate chip cookies and definitely ended up eating quite a few because I made them very small. These were such a hit, the box is completely empty. We ate them all, so would recommend this recipe. And then on this day, because I had a really big breakfast burrito and I was very busy, I ended up missing lunch 
because I was getting a puppy. And here you can see her. And now I'm gonna show you my really easy plain dinner that I made of gluten-free pasta with some Trader Joe's vegan pesto on it. And I probably topped it with some vegan cheese. Just forgot to show you guys that. Such a boring meal, but as a new dog mom, I have been making some very plain, basic, quick meals, as I'm sure you understand if you have been in that position. So I'm glad I filmed this when I did. I really love making these when I truly feel excited about the recipes, and I feel like I wait always just the right amount of time between them to get re-inspired again. That's it for what I ate in a week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did, subscribe if you haven't, follow me on Instagram, hit the notification bell, leave a comment, tell me what you've been eating lately. And if you were curious about her, her name is Sammy. I found her on Craigslist. She's four months old and you'll definitely see her again in the future without a doubt or over on my Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys later. Bye.